Greetings folks, Alvaro Martinez here, Product Manager for System Platform and the Connectivity Offerings from Wonderware. Today we're going to be focusing our discussion on the new Operations Integration Servers. They're the next generation of device integration. Before I start that, uh, I want to show you here in the SMC that I'm running a System Platform application with 10 engines and I have configured a GE SRTP DA server, each engine connecting to a different device. So in my configuration, I have a multitude of devices all configured to connect to different controllers. I'll go ahead and um, deactivate the server as it will be required for me to do that for the installation of the new components. All right, so now that the server has been stopped, I also close the SMC and proceed to the download from the GCS side. All the new servers, all the new OI servers are posted in the GCS side under the product hub section. So as you can see here, they're all uh, listed as they have been uh, just published. The first component that we need to install in the new uh, scheme is the OI core. And as you can see here uh, in the description, it mentions that this is the mandatory component and then all the protocol add-ons can follow. So we'll go ahead and start the uh, download of the core. As usual, we have to, uh, we should review the readme first to see uh, if there's something new there that is important to us. We'll confirm the download, and I'll go ahead and save the zip file. The core is uh, downloaded as a zip. The add-ons are downloaded as MSIs, and we'll see that in a moment. So I'll go ahead and save the core. And I'll open that uh, and extract the zip file. All right, now that it has been extracted, I'll run through the setup. And this goes relatively quick. Uh, as you see here also, part of the component of the core is the simulation server that can help you do some uh, simulation of software when necessary. This will just take a few seconds to install. Uh, while that's installing, I'll show you here that uh, from the IDE perspective, as I mentioned before, I have my my Galaxy here. The installation has been completed. I have my platform, my engine, my area structure, and my objects, uh, each one uh, using its own configuration. So I have a, a very repeatable structure here. Okay, now that the uh, installation has been completed, uh, let's close this once, and we'll go back uh, to our downloads in this case we're going to focus on the uh, GE SRTP OI server add-on. So we'll go ahead and start the download for that. Again, we'll take a quick look at the readme to see if there's any information that is required for us to review. Now, the download of the uh, add-ons is a little bit different. As you can see here, it's an MSI. It's a very small MSI, and uh, I'll actually run it directly which will kick off the installer. And that was it. Uh, the installation is complete. It literally takes a few seconds just to install the add-ons. So, you know, you can install the add-ons as necessary from the site. Continue to check the website because we're going to be publishing more and more add-ons as, as we move forward. All right, so let me go back to the SMC and we'll see what's new here. So you see that we have the uh, GE SRTP. I'm going to go ahead and activate that server. And um, also, as we showed before, we had our, our platform uh, with some of the engines running. Now, here's where we start seeing the value of the new operations integration servers. Uh, I have my existing DA server running. And as you see here, there's a new section in, in the Operations Integration Manager. Previously, it was the DA Server Manager. And this section has the new structure for the new servers. Now we have two families, the simulation server that was included with the core and the new GE SRTP. And by default, I have one configured. So now, uh, you can see here that I have uh, 
two parallel configurations, the legacy dash GESRTP and the new operations integration server configuration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start transferring the old configuration of the uh, GESRTP to the new OI servers. Part of what we're doing here is making sure that we can divide the configuration into unique ones because in this particular case we have one GE server managing the entire connection to 20 different controllers so we want to split that and I can do that in several ways uh, first and foremost um, let me open a second I'm gonna minimize my IDE and I'm gonna open a second uh, SMC so we can do a little bit of uh, side-by-side -side operations all right so in the existing one which is on the left and the new one will be will be working on the right so we'll create our typical configurations uh, which is going to add the G port and there's no changes here and now we're going to add uh, the first object which is what we call uh, I'm going to call it PLC1 Right, and we follow the same configuration, which is uh, the RX7i, and we'll copy the configuration, and I'll go ahead and add, and add the device. I'll go ahead and pause the video for a little bit while I uh, do this configuration of these few items because then I'm going to show you the power of what's coming up next. All right, I just completed uh, configuring this first uh, set and with the new operations integration servers, let me save that configuration, the first set that you have configured consider as, as your template. Then as you create more and more instances of that configuration, it'll use this one as the basis. So for example, let's say I want to actually create a server instance. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and create five at a time. And here's my uh, the names. Now I have actually created five uh, identical instance of the first one. And as you see here, I can then very easily go through my configuration changes uh, to copy and paste the information from one to the next. And why am I doing that? Because I want my configuration to be unique to each particular server so that either configuration changes or for performance purposes, I'm running all these servers um, uniquely. All right, so let me do the third one again, and I'll copy a few more of these. And by the way, I don't have to uh, change some of this configuration. I was just showing you here for the sake of it. Um, all right, so I'll go through a few more. Let me pause again for a few minutes, and then I'll come back and show you again how we're gonna start switching the application to go through this. We'll go ahead and continue. It literally just took me a few minutes to come back and uh, change the IP addresses of uh, the nodes that I was going to connect to and also to adjust uh, the topics to match that uh, connection. Another way that I can create uh, another instance, for example, if I like this configuration of this server, is I can right click on it and select clone instance. That way I can create a unique configuration and this one in particular is going to be my six uh, node so now that my uh, node has been cloned again with all the information keeping keeping the servers the naming convention proper uh, 
I'll go ahead and set the IP address to the controller same. And it'll take me just a couple of seconds to adjust the topics to follow suit. Alright, so now uh, all the servers have been configured. And as you can see here, the DAS GES RTP is running. And now I can activate my new servers. Now before I do that, I want to show you the uh, licensing uh, manager because you do need the OI server feature line. This is the professional feature line that allows you to run the old legacy DA servers and the new OI server of the same type. In this case, GESRTP, old and new, in the same node. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate my new servers and now you can see that these ones are independent of one another. And uh, really there's nothing uh, configured uh, to communicate with them at this point because they are, um, and I'll, I'll collapse all this so it's easier to see. Now once I do that, what I want to show you next is I have my existing application communicating through the legacy DA server to my remote nodes. I want to switch over to run through the new um, OI GSRTP server. So I'll bring up the ID and uh, basically what I'm going to do is redirect my DI object. And all I need to do in this particular case is change the server name to match that of the new OI server. So the difference is going to be GESRTP underscore 001. So that's the one that I need to use. And I think I'm using a zero here. Let's verify. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that because I'm going to be using it in my other DI objects. I'll move this over here so we can continue to see. And I'm going to go ahead and do my second one. Let's take a little bit of the clutter out of the screen. So this is going to be my two. So I want to check as I uh, progress through uh, my configuration that I'm actually switching out from the DA server into the new OI servers. So you can see here uh, all the existing topics that were active in the in the old one. And uh, as we start looking into the new ones that we have deployed, we should start seeing active topics in those. So you can see now that the uh, this configuration has some to active topics in it. and similar with the second configuration. At this point I should not have anything active in the other ones because I haven't deployed anything to them yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch. Uh, let me move this one over to the side a little bit. We're gonna do the i3.
and you notice that uh, the only thing that I have to modify at this point is that very simple configuration of the DI object. I'm going to deploy it. And while we're deploying, we should see that uh, this one in particular should come active and get some topics on it. All right, so there they come. So now it switched basically from the topics running in the in the DAS server to the DI objects, and so on and so forth. Uh, I just wanted to show you that it's very very simple now to switch your architecture, and then you have better control and granularity of the changes because if you can see here, now if I need to make configuration changes or I have issues with one of the servers, it doesn't affect. Uh, the entire system. It only affects that specific configuration changes. To prove the point, we'll go ahead and deactivate the uh, GS RTP DA server and uh, what that will have to do is it will show that the objects in areas 6 through 10 or in engines 6 through 10 will stop communicating because that they're all tied to the uh, DA server but once in from uh, the first three that we already converted and are individually configured will continue to communicate. As a matter of fact, same will happen if I deactivate uh, the uh, the second one. It would only impact that single instance instead of impacting them all. And that's the key here. Go ahead and activate them again. Just to show that they come back live. All right, and you see how much faster one started versus the other one. It takes up much longer because it's a much larger configuration. The first one started much faster because they're completely independent processes, not within the same uh, scope of an entire DA server. I'm going to show you here in InTouch also. It's very simple to do the same set of configuration changes. Uh, in InTouch, when I configure a specific access name, it's configured to the uh, topic and access name. So I can do the same set of changes here, and now from an InTouch application perspective, have the same level of granularity. I could do that here one by one, or I could do it using uh, DB Low Utility in InTouch. So we'll leave it at that for now. That actually wraps up the demo that I wanted to show you. As you can see here, all my configurations are up and running. And it was very simple to switch from the legacy to the new. Thanks for watching.